Hey guys, uh, welcome to part four of this uh, tutorial series uh, where we create an HDA inside Houdini and bring it into Unreal uh, through uh, Blender um, and finally create this grass in Unreal uh, with uh, with wind. So in um, so in this part, <coughs> uh, what I'll be showing you is uh, is to is is a method to create uh, the material inside Unreal so that we can get the grass in full color. And also with uh, with uh, with with wind effect. Okay, so now let's uh, get started. Now, uh, so so I just uh, I like to uh, uh, keep things organized. So, so in Unreal, <coughs> I got this uh, this uh, these three folders created just for this purpose. So under te uh, textures, what we have here is the base color, normal, opacity, and roughness. So opacity and roughness, uh, we may not be using them. Because we can we can just have um, color color for for roughness controlling roughness, and uh, we already have opacity uh, texture inside um, base color as as the alpha channel. So if I open double click this um, base color, you can see that the the alpha channel already is there uh, combined with the base color. Okay, so we don't need need uh, need these two. So I'll just delete them. So we only need the color, base color, and normal. Uh, so for the material, uh, first of all, we need to make a material parameter collection. So why am I making material parameter collection? Is that uh, we'll be controlling uh, the wind globally. Okay. Uh, so to control the wind glo globally, we need two parameters. Uh, first one is the <coughs> uh, wind intensity, and second one is the wind direction. So for intensity, we'll be using a scalar parameter, and for uh, direction uh, we'll be using a vector parameter so let's go ahead and create it so right click uh, under material uh, choose material parameter collection so by naming i'll just name it as mpc mpc is material parameter collection uh, so global wind okay so that is what we are going to uh, going to uh, use for this purpose um, it's called global wind so just save it <clears throat> uh, double click on this uh, metal parameter collection open it so you will see two values here like first one is scalar parameter and second one is vector so so add element for the scalar parameter and give it a parameter name um, as uh, wind intensity also uh, i'll be giving it a value of two for now uh, just an arbitrary value i'm not like sure what will work but is good for now and under vector parameters open this and open the index and for the parameter name I'm going to give it uh, wind direction okay so we have uh, wind di di direction and I'm going to use uh, green as the uh, as a channel so just type one so you so you get a green color here uh, that is pretty much it for the um, wind <coughs> metal parameter collection okay now we need to make a master material here so master material is is uh, is the is a material that that will control all the functions all the uh, you know shader everything okay so for 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 adding material right click material and for master material i usually use the m underscore so i just uh, give it name as grass okay so the so so this will be the uh, master material for all the grass in the world <coughs> excuse me I'm having a bad throat um, and I just saved saved it and open this material um, master material so for for a, for making a leaf material what we need is uh, is uh, is opacity mask so the opacity mask is uh, right now it is uh, deactivated so under a blend mode Change this to uh, mask. Mo the moment you do that, the opacity mask must be available. Then uh, shading model change this to two-sided foliage. Okay, and choose two-sided. I don't know why they have this these these two. So two-sided and also also to uh, two two-sided foliage, but that's okay. That's how the uh, that's how Epic made this uh, material. Okay, so in this, uh, I need to bring in um, 
some placeholder te uh, te textures um, and to to use as a as a base uh, to be converted to param parameters. I'll just show you what I mean. Um, I have some common textures here. So these three are the one I'm going to use. <coughs> right now I only need two, uh, pH color and pH normal. So pH means the placeholder, okay? Nothing, nothing fancy. So drag them in. It's for the color, this is for the normal. Because for uh, for um, roughness and also for opacity mask, I can use uh, the, I mean, for roughness I can use just a value and for opacity mask, I, I can use alpha channel from the color texture. So select these two, convert them into uh, into parameter. Okay, the first one, it's uh, albedo. And I will create a group here. Uh, I think I already have it. Get a group here called uh, textures. Okay, so albedo will be the will be having sort priority one, and this is uh, normal. Normal will be uh, added to textures, and I have sort priority two. Okay, so plug in base color here, then uh, alpha to opacity mask, and normal to normal. So those things are done. Now what we need to do is uh, I need a control for specularity and also roughness. So we'll have uh, two scalar scalar uh, values here. So select them, right click and uh, convert to parameter. So the first one is um, specular. So spec power and second one is roughness power. Uh, so these two, I can move them to a group called, uh, I'll, I'll create a new group called adjustments. Adjustments, uh, spec power can can have the sort priority one and roughness power uh, can have sort priority two, okay. So for roughness, I'll keep default value as uh, 0.5 and also specular, I'll keep 0 0.5. Uh, connect this spec to here and roughness to here. So that is pretty much it for, for those two. Now what I need to do is to add a subsurface color. So that 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 we will do when we are making the, uh, I mean, once I drag in the, the mesh, we'll get a better idea about what, what that is. So under materials, I, I need to convert this into a, uh, sorry, convert this, this into a material instance. So I click on the material and use material Create material instance and name it as MI for, for material instance and remove the last uh, automatic lead uh, assigned name. So now, now open this and we have material instance. Now select albedo and normal and under textures, drag these to uh, the these slots over here. So albedo and this is this one is for normal. Okay, so we have the material. Now open the mesh, double click on this static mesh. So that's the grass mesh we uh, just imported in the uh, in the last part. And um, assign this material. So select this material, I mean the material instance, and under uh, grass, just assign this. So so we have a grass material applied. And now let's see it in the uh, in the viewport. So meshes, drag it uh, into the viewport. And there you go. So uh, we have the grass uh, with fully assigned material on it. So the only problem now we have is that it doesn't have any subsurface scattering. So the, so uh, you can also call it uh, translucency, the light passing through the leaf. Uh, we'll quickly add one uh, into the mass material. So go into M underscore grass. And uh, I need to use a, uh, use a, use a subsurface power. Okay, so press one and left click. Convert to parameter. Uh, subsurface power. Okay, now it is zero. So we need to multiply this with the uh, uh, with the albedo to get the get the right amount. So get the albedo color here, and connect this subsurface power, and connect this to uh, subsurface color. Okay, now this can go into adjustments. 
and give it number three and save it so this will finish our our uh, material for now so mi grass so when you increase this value subsurface power right right now it is zero right make it like uh, 0.5 you can see that the the uh, the uh, the grass now it is letting some sunlight go through them so that's called sub subsurface it gives a nice uh, you know nice look to the grass than making it look like cards okay so now we have uh, everything we need to uh, to start making the the wind material okay open the um, uh, master material and we will start making the graph over here okay because it, because it, it needs some uh, some space to uh, to work so what we need uh, we need uh, the two major com components for this so, so the first one is the world position so this is called the absolute world position so it's the input data so it needs it won't work by itself it needs uh, a lot of connections after this then uh, we need the object pivot point object pivot point okay we'll use these two plus what we need is uh, we need the parameter collection okay just type collection collection parameter uh, we need two of these so one here just control d duplicate here for the first one uh, you can you can choose the parameter name as um, so it's like a yeah, global wind so change changes to global wind global wind i think global wind is the one we just created let me check let me just double check material uh, yeah M mpc global wind okay so select, select, select this and change the parameter name to wind direction and this is wind intensity so we have all the uh not all the but uh, but we have the stuff we need to start the shader just give it more space yeah, I think I need that much space here. Okay, now let's start. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> okay, and now we need a, 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 a vector parameter here. So press uh, press three on the keyboard and left click. Okay, this is the um, this is where three constant three vector. Mm -hmm. So under constant three three vector, we are going to select color green. So press one for the, for for Y, which will give you the uh, the the green color, and we need to connect these two uh, into this uh, dot dot parameter. So so just just uh, just just type in uh, dot product. So why we're using dot dot product is is because we need to combine these uh, these vector parameters into uh, into a uh, float. So select the first one, object pivot location. Uh, to a and the uh, constant three to uh, to b so so we got the dot dot product <coughs> then then we need to make this value a, 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 a little smaller so to make it smaller we need to use a divide so in divide use a uh, use uh, use four so we are dividing it by uh, by four then we need to add time to it so we are so we are uh, so we are getting this uh, dot product dividing by uh, by 4 after that we are we are adding this to uh, a a time so add and just click here right you right, can add time 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 is also my input data just like this just like absolute world position and connect this to uh, the uh, the add so, <clears throat> so after add, we need to uh, we need to specify um, the uh, the swaying speed for the grass blades. Okay, so to specify the the uh, the sway sway speed, we need to multiply this with a with a scalar parameter. So multiply this with a scalar. So scalar is like press uh, one on the keyboard and left click, convert to parameter, and this is. Uh, sway speed i will just move this to a, a, a group 
wind controls okay and give it a value of one so it's called priority one so space field be the first one you will see there so give it a value of uh, of, uh, of 0.5 for now as a, as a default value and multiply it with the uh, time okay so that part is good now next thing we need to do is to uh, is to, is to tell uh, the the shader uh, to move only a um, only a certain color so remember we gave green color for uh, for the grass blades uh, in in Houdini so this is where the green color com comes in so now no no now we need to add this with a vertex color uh, node so press add and here right click and vertex color so in vertex color i'm going to specify only the green green color that's why that's why we applied green okay we only have green here so whichever grass blade that is having green will move okay uh, <clears throat> now after this uh, we need to uh, like make, make it like a waveform so, so, so for the waveform we are, we are going to use a, a sign so just type uh, sign sign node so when it passes through sign it it uh, it gets the waveform then uh, then we have to uh, do some math here like addition multiplication division stuff like that okay so i'm going to add uh, something to it uh, this is a, this is an arbitrary value so i'm not sure how much uh, we need to give we can change it later depending on the, the outcome so i'm going to give a value of uh, 2 here and after this uh, i need to make um, like make it uh, into a fractional value so just divide it divided by um, by 4 maybe uh, i think we'll try with 4 we'll try with 4 4 4 for now then after this we need to combine this with the <clears throat> uh with the wind intensity so intensity uh intensity is uh is is uh, is two right now so in so, so in a global sense two means it is a bit bit too high because since 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 we are dividing uh this value by by four it's already a really small small value right here okay after the sign so we need to give this uh, again another divide uh, give it a high uh, a high value like like 100 okay so by dividing this by uh, or keep it like uh, 60 uh, I will try with this then if it is like if it if it doesn't work then we'll come back and change it okay by 60 here or keep it here then you can multiply these two into um, into one value multiply the uh, the value we got from the wind density and uh, this sine wave okay um, <clears throat> then then comes an important uh, part of this trader that is called the rotate about axis rotate about uh, axis so this one under utility so this is what makes the grass move okay um, so in this we need to apply uh, we, like we need to fill all these con connect all these inputs or it won't work okay so rotation angle comes from the uh, the sine wave so we connect this to the ro rotation uh, angle right here now we need to make use of this absolute world world position so um, absolute world position goes to position here uh then pivot point goes to uh object pivot point you can you can directly connect it you don't need anything else in between so object pivot point okay uh, so object, uh, so absolute world position goes to uh the position then pivot uh, uh, object pivot point goes to pivot point then there's one more normalized rotation axis so that means uh which direction you do you want this uh to rotate to um, like if it is uh, green um, i mean red green or uh, blue or or xyz okay which, which, 
direction you want this to move. So, uh, so we already have a wind direction uh, we assign through a, uh, a collection parameter. So you get this out, then you need to normalize it. Norm normalize this uh, this value, okay? Uh, so we can just keep it here because we because we need to normalize this multiple times. I think, yeah. The wind wind direction has to be normalized, and put uh, I mean connect this into this normalized rotation axis. So we connected all all the inputs here, okay. Uh, now the uh, the output has to be uh, connected to uh, to something, okay. So let me think what what it is spe specifically. Um, yeah. So what you what you what you need to do do now is uh, you got this uh, absolute world position and object pivot point, right? So we need to specify uh, which direction we need the uh, we, need, we need the movement to uh, to come from. So we don't want the entire grass to move like from from an arbitrary uh, height, but what we need is the uh, is the uh, is the z z axis. That is, or you can say if you're saying it in like uh, like in RGB values, it is is the B value that 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 goes along the height. Okay, so for that we need to use a component mask. Uh, comp component mask here. Then just just check the uh, B here. So B means the uh, along along the height. Okay, vertically. So mask B. Make a duplicate. So we have to use this mask B for uh, for these two, like uh, the. Uh, the absolute world position and also the object pivot point. So connect these two here to uh, to mask. Okay. Now, now after this uh, step, this uh, this mask has to be uh, subtracted. So now we have time to find the uh, find the height of the grass blade. Okay. So so it is a, it is like imagine a mask that 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 is like um, like white for the entire world. Now we are like specifying the absolute world position of this object. That only around the height. Subtract that that with the object pivot location. So you like exactly get the height of the grass. Okay. So, uh, so 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 we are going to sub subtract these two. Okay. Subtract these two. Uh, the, the first one, absolute world position, uh, with the uh, object pivot point so now we are getting the uh, the the height of the grass okay now now this value might be a little bit a uh, little bit too much because 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 of the uh, of the way it is uh, designed because you need to di divide this multiple times so uh, so we'll use a value of uh, of 100 for now so divide this by uh, maybe uh, try 100 and and this one has to be uh, multiplied with this rotation about axis. So press M, left click, connect this here, and connect this to uh, multiply. Okay. So you got this. Let me check if it is uh, the correct uh, correct one. Yeah, divide by one 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 hundred, multiply, and you can directly connect this multiply to the uh, to the uh, world position offset. Of the shader, so let's move this down here and connect this to W is called world position offset, okay? And try and apply this, and now the grass is moving. There you go. See, the grass has nice movement there. Now, if we try to change this value, right? Uh, now, uh, now it, it is a very soft, a soft movement. Right now, when I try to change this value, uh, maybe to fifty, let's see what's going to happen. Maybe nothing, but it has a slight change because it is it is now uh, moving more to the I mean more to the bottom, right? So you can see that the the the, the bottom has has a slight movement too. So that is not what we want. So that's why we are we are specifying this value here. So keep it like one hundred. 
so the bottom is like more or less uh, stiff that is that is how we need the grass to move okay so this value is good you don't have to change anything only thing you can you can you can do is the uh, sway speed uh, because we have it in the material instance so that should be good now let's uh, check the grass uh, instance material uh, then wind controls we have sway speed is like 0.5 by default now if i'm making two you can see that the grass flies are moving really fast uh, you can increase the the speed you can adjust it if i make it 10 is like a, like like very un, unrealistic it's like uh, the grass is getting scared or something okay so i'll switch it back to 0.5 so if you want the grass place to stop moving you can just uh, put zero so to uh, to stop moving <clears throat> also we will uh, learn learn how to use a static switch parameter in the uh, in the next part of video so uh, so the next part of video we'll go a little bit uh, advanced on this um, we'll add a secondary motion to it to the grass blade so right now we only have uh, green color for uh, uh, for the vertex uh, channel now what if we add a, a a red color as well for the secondary movement second moment uh, by what second moment what i mean is that so this is the primary motion right the grass is like stiff moving like this so what about the the tip also need, needs to move like this like move like a kind of uh, uh, like not like uh, exactly like cloth but it will have a more softer mo movement so for that we need to uh, paint some vertex colors uh, at the tip we can either use blue or red because green is already taken by the uh, grass blades so we'll we'll have one more uh, one more addition at the top uh, just to control this uh, this red channel mo movement okay that we'll learn in the uh, in the next part of video thanks for watching guys